Hey everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at Unbeatful 120cm wide softbox. Quick disclaimer, Unbeatful did send me this softbox for review, but this video isn't sponsored. First, let me share with you what you're going to get in the box. You're going to get a nice storage bag, the softbox itself, two soft diffusion cloths, and finally a honeycomb grid. The build quality of this softbox is really good. I've already had a softbox from Unbeatful in the past, the Unbeatful 70 centimeters wide softbox, and it had really good build quality. And this one is pretty much the same. It has really great build quality. The frame is built out of metal, of course, and the softbox itself is built out of softbox material, but everything feels really premium and really top notch. But what I did notice about this particular softbox compared to other softboxes I've used in the past is the side Velcro on the edge of the softbox where you attach the soft diffusion cloth and also the honeycomb grid. You have this Velcro thing to attach those things to the softbox. On this softbox, it's a bit less sticky. It's not as sticky as on other softboxes I've used. So when you try to remove the honeycomb grid or the outer diffusion cloth, it's much easier. You don't have to really pull it as hard as on other soft boxes. I think that's a really nice touch from Unbeatful. Another thing that also surprised me about this Unbeatful soft box is the weight. Although it's 120 centimeters wide, it's not super heavy. It weighs only 1.85 kilograms. I've measured the weight and I think it's pretty light for the size of this softbox. For example, my other Godox 70 centimeters wide softbox weighs just 1.4 kilograms. So not a big difference in terms of weight between my small softbox and this big one. Pretty nice. Now let's talk about the obvious 120 centimeter size. Why going bigger is better. With a bigger softbox, you essentially increase the size of the light and hence make the light softer. The bigger the light source compared to the subject, the softer it is. But there are some downsides as well. For one, it is going to be really bulky, so you need a bigger room to handle this kind of a size. Second thing is output, light output. The bigger the softbox, the more light output you need. And finally, the bigger the softbox, the more it is going to spill in the background. So you'll have to use the grid and also maybe some flags if you really want to control your light. For me personally, none of this is an issue because I do have space in my room for this softbox. Also, my light is powerful enough. And finally, I kind of want it to spill light all over the background because I want to raise the light ambience in the background. So for me, it's working really well. I'm just too big of a fan of soft light and this soft box provides me exactly the light that I want because it's so big and also so soft. Compared to my old 70 centimeters wide soft box, in my opinion, there's a big difference. You know what, talk is cheap. Let me show you a couple of comparisons between this 120 centimeters wide softbox and my old 70 centimeters wide softbox from Godox. All right, and right now I'm using the 70 centimeters wide softbox from Godox, and as you can see, it makes a big difference. This same shot looks completely different. For one, this side of my face now is more dark. You can see it looks a bit more contrasty. The difference between the highlights on this side of my face and the shadows on this side of my face is harsher, if that makes sense. The roll-off between the highlights and the shadows is stronger. With the bigger softbox, it's more gradual. It's like goes softer from highlights to shadows, but with this one, it's a bit more contrasty, much stronger. And also, if you take a look at the background, it's much darker now because this light is smaller. And by the way, I'm not using the grid on the softbox, and I wasn't using the grid also on the bigger softbox. And yeah, the background is dark right now because the light is smaller and it's not spilling all over the place. And maybe this is what you want. Maybe you want this kind of a look or maybe, like I said, you want to control the light a bit more and it's going to be much easier to control a smaller source of light rather than a bigger source of light. All right, let me show you now a different scenario. And right now, this is a different shot, a wide angle shot. I'm using my 20 millimeter lens with my full frame camera. So we have a pretty wide angle field of view, wide angle shot. And I'm still using the 70 centimeters wide softbox from Godox. This is how it looks like. It looks okay, not the best. I think it looks a bit too contrasty again. The shadows on this side of my face are a bit too harsh for my 
personal liking. And the background is a bit too dark for my personal liking. So let me mount now the 120 centimeter softbox and show you how it looks like. And right now I'm using the 120 centimeters wide softbox and as you can see it looks totally different compared to the 70 centimeters wide softbox. For one, these shadows of my face are not as harsh as they were with the smaller softbox and also the background is a bit brighter. Again, it's spilling light all over the place. I kind of like it, but maybe you want more control over light, so maybe a smaller softbox will work better for you. And overall, I think this shot looks a bit better with this bigger softbox because it's wide. For wide angle shots, if you have lots of subjects in the shot and the shot is wide, I think it makes more sense to use a bigger source of light to light everything with just one light and not have multiple lights just shining everywhere pretty much. I think this softbox is worth the money. It's only $100, not too expensive. I think it's worth the price. Build quality is nice. Comes with two diffusion cloths, honeycomb grid, a nice storage bag. It's pretty lightweight as well, so it's not gonna be too heavy on your light stand and so on. Thanks for watching.